Hello, Jards of Football, Sports Talk Radio. I'm your host tonight, Logan Landers. And join me to talk about the 2021 season preview for the Wisconsin Badgers. It's my right-hand man, the co-host of the Unscripted Sports Podcast, and one of my dearest friends in the sports broadcasting community, Jay McLeod. What's going on, Jay? Hey, man. Ready to talk about some Wisconsin football. How are you doing this evening, Logan? Hey, doing good, man. Doing good. Hey, before we get started, though, if you guys enjoy this video, please be sure to like, comment, share, subscribe to our channel. We've been having a lot of great success over on YouTube, Facebook, and our podcast as well. If you haven't heard about it already, we're available on uh, Spotify, Apple, iHeart, any podcast platform you prefer. We are on there, and we have been doing some big numbers all over there. So thank you so much for subscribing and listening to our amazing shows that we put out each and every day. So, Jay, let's get right into this one, my man. Let's talk about the Wisconsin Badgers, as you like to say. What you like about them coming into this 2021 season? Well, I like the fact that they have a lot of people coming back uh, so that some of their continuity will be there in terms of a lot of the juniors and seniors. I Some of, some of them are going to opt out. They wind up not opting out, and they're going to be needed uh, very much so because, honestly, last year, as you know, Logan, was a very disastrous season. It didn't go – quite where they thought it was going to go, but they're going to do it again and try to do it with the same guys they did last year, and hopefully the outcome will be a little bit different, brother. Yeah, you you hope for it, man, because they, you know, you you thought they were going to do big things last year, but that injury bug, along with COVID, too, they had a few guys go out with COVID, including their starting quarterback, and that just kind of derailed the season all for them, all in all. Um, You know, they didn't have the best season at all, but hopefully they can pick it up this year and that they can get back to their winning ways. But I'm with you. I I agree with you there. I think that getting back a good majority of your starters from last year, uh, you definitely got to feel that those guys kind of got gifed out of playing a lot um, with the injuries and whatnot with the shortened season also. Um, So they're going to be coming back with a vengeance, trying to get some more wins for the Badgers and proving a point as well. So who who are some of your key players coming into the season, whether it be on offense or on defense? Well, obviously, you know, uh, like we talked about earlier on defense, I mean, they, they, in order to keep them in the top 10, they're going to need that, the same groups back. So, I, so I, you know, when I look at the defensive side of the ball, you know, I look at Jim, you know, the, the biggest line is keeping uh, defensive coordinator Jim uh, Lynn mm-hmm. Hurd from, go, uh, from going to the Green Bay Packers. I think retaining him as their defensive coordinator uh, was a big step in the right direction because uh, he was interviewing with Green Bay, and, Green, and he wound up telling Green Bay that he was going to opt out and stay with uh, – Wisconsin, which I think you know, for them that that was that was, that was pretty clutch. Um, on the on the offensive side of the ball, I think having Mertz come back and be the QB one to uh to 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 guide that that the offensive line, they're gonna need they're gonna need Mertz to be very effective in order for them to go anywhere. Winning the Big Ten uh, West will absolutely rest with Mertz, um, but he's gonna have to elevate that offense and and rely on those weapons and rely on his defense uh, for them to go anywhere. But absolutely, I think Mertz and I think uh, and I think having uh, their defensive coordinator come back um, was really key. Um, they lost three starters in Loudermilk, Rand, and I forgot who the third one was. So they they lost three key starters in their linebacking core, but or I should say in their in their in their um, line core. Their linebacker core though is still coming back. So. The majority of them are coming back, but Mertz and that defensive coordinator, I think, were the two biggest keys. Yeah, yeah I, I think that with those guys coming back and if if Graham Mertz can have um, a good season, because remember, whenever he he kind of came out of nowhere in the, I believe it was the first game of the season um, in 2020, he did absolutely phenomenal work. Um, then, unfortunately, I believe, you know, the COVID affected a lot of players in college football, man. And unfortunately, um you know, he, he wasn't able to get back to that uh, that great form he was um, early in the season. And with that shortened season being only seven games they played, um, you, were, you weren't really able to see fully what he could do. But I think this year with a better schedule, with more games to be played, with a lot of the guys coming back, and with, you know, like you said, keeping their D coordinator from not leaving to the NFL, that's a big key. Um, I, I think Wisconsin is definitely going to improve from last year. I think last year was just a, a horrible year all around. Um, for the team, but I think they're going to come back and they're going to have a good season this year. But some of the guys that I'm looking out for for this Badgers program, so I'm going to keep it on offense first. I'm going to go with Jake Ferguson, the tight end. And, man, mm-hmm. like I said, he might not get talked about the most, but he's been consistent all throughout his tenure at Wisconsin. In three years there, 
He's got over 400 yards on 400 uh, yards on the first two seasons. Last season, obviously, he was a little bit short, and he only got 305. Uh, but he's got 10 total touchdowns though in his three years, so he's proving to be a formidable offensive weapon for that Wisconsin team. So I think that he should really t- um, take a big step this year, and I think he's really going to help out the program. Also, Jalen Berger, the uh, mm-hmm. the running back, he's going to have a good solid season as well. I think um, if they can get that good. Uh, mix of just passing and running the ball pretty good. I think Wisconsin can do a pretty good job on the offensive side of the ball. But like you said, the defense is really where they make their money at. That's where they're, that's their bread and butter right there. And for me, the one guy who I'm looking out for, for this 2021 season is Jack Sanborn, man. Like I yeah. said, not the biggest guy in the world, but man, is he efficient over 130 tackles over the last two seasons a handful of sacks, a lot of tackles for losses as well. He's definitely one of the better linebackers um, in in college football, I would think, just because he's playing for a Wisconsin team, which doesn't get the most media attention. I think he kind of gets slept on a little bit. But I definitely think that uh, Sanborn as well as Berger and Mertz, of course, I think if those guys can have some success, I think Wisconsin could do some good stuff this year. I I also think that. What do you think? Yeah, you know – I think the weakness, if there's a weakness on that defense, I think it's in their secondary, honestly. I think they need better uh, secondary play. And to address that, they brought in NFL vet Hank Pocheet uh, to help that secondary out. So hopefully under his coaching and his tutelage, that uh, weakness of theirs can be improved upon because I think the rest of the defense is actually doing really well. I mean, they led the Big Ten in total defense. They only gave up 299 total yards per game. So their defense, you know, did quite well. They're number nine in scoring. Uh, mm-hmm. and the nation. So it's not like they have a bad defense. They just need to tweak it up a little bit on the secondary. And I think by hiring Hank uh, Poteet, uh, the NFL veteran, I think that's going to help shore that up. Another problem they had was was when Mertz was playing last year, he he can, he completed 56.9% of his passes, but he threw four touchdowns and five picks, I believe, in the, in the last three or last uh, six games. And they went three for three in that last six. So... There is a lot of uh, work that needs to be done, like you said, on the offense. I think uh, the head coach, uh, Chris, is going to call the plays now. He took the he took the play calling, uh, play calling abilities away from his offensive coordinator, and he's actually going to be calling the plays now. And so I think they're going to be – obviously be a run-first offense, and I think between their, and their workhorse, Jalen Berger, um, you know, he, he, I think he's averaging like five yards per carry in the last four games, so – they're going to rely heavily on Berger because, quite honestly, they don't have a lot of running back talent that comes up from behind Berger. They got a few guys on their on their roster, but none of them have the experience like what Berger has, and you don't really know what you're going to get out of them. So Berger is going to be a highly uh, key influential guy in a run first offense, and I think Mertz is going to have to do a better job at throwing the pit, the touchdowns and, and and you know not throwing not throwing quite so many interceptions. Yeah. And I think with Chris calling the plays, I think that's going to facilitate. Uh, both ends of the stick there, and I and I do think that they're going to do quite well. Yeah, I, I'm with you, Jay. I think that if they can definitely limit the turnovers um, on offense this year, that's going to help out a lot. And if they can get some pressure on the quarterback this year, they really need help um, getting some sacks this year. They were struggling a little bit last year, um, yeah. but I think that they're going to improve a little bit this year. They have um, Isaac Townsend being transferred over, so I think that that could help out a good bit. And I, I think that as long as you they can do that, I think the Badgers should be in for a pretty good season. Um, looking at their schedule, it is tough. I'm not going to lie. They play, they yeah. face a lot of good teams um, this season. But I definitely could see them getting a winning season. But they're going to have to fight for it, I think, though, man. What, what's your thoughts on their schedule so far? You know, that is the one part I did not uh, I did not look up last night when I was oh, doing that. Is that right, bro? Tell, tell yeah, me the game real yeah, I'll give you some of the big the big names they're facing. So week one, they're going up against Penn State. That's always going to be tough. Yeah. Let's see. Then looks like in week four, they're going up against the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. That's going to be another tough game Ooh, there. Yeah, that's a rough that's one. one right there. Notre Dame will then, definitely definitely be a tough one. Then the next week, right after that, they're going up against Michigan. So that that's a 50-50 toss up. You never know how Harbaugh is going to be that game and how that right. season is going. Um, Illinois, Army, Purdue, Iowa, who had a, you know, I was pretty solid. Yeah. Uh, Rutgers, Northwestern, Nebraska, and then they end the season against Minnesota. So I think that a, Iowa game is going to be a tough one. I think, I think Iowa's going to be tough. I think Michigan could give them 
just because of, of the pond being across the pond from each other, mm-hmm. people in Michigan don't like Wisconsin and vice versa. So I think that's always going to be a tough matchup just because of the history between those two states. So I see Michigan, Iowa, and Notre Dame being the three biggest or three toughest uh, out, of, out of, of all of those. I think those are going to be the three toughest ones uh, that they'll be going up against. Yeah, it's going to be a tough season, I think. It's not going to be a walk in the park by any means necessary. But I think that this Badgers team, like you said, they've got experience, which is a, a big thing to have um, in college football at your program. So that's good. they got a lot of guys coming back who know the playbook. And they're just going to build more chemistry this year. Um, the wide receiving core needs to get it going. And I think that if they can just put it a li- put it more together than it was last year, I think Wisconsin could have a, a you know pretty solid season all in all. I think they could finish – um, with a, a winning record and just build upon, you know, the, the disaster that was the 2020 season. And I think if you're a Badgers fan, you'll take a winning season this year. And the next year is when I think they can really start going. It's like, all right, can we get, can we go for the championship now? Can we get that conference title? So I think that just taking those small steps is going to really help this year. But all in all, I, I like the Badgers this year. I think they're going to have a solid season. I think they're going to improve. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see how they perform. But what are your final thoughts um, on the Badgers 2021 season coming up. Yeah, no, I, I think – so as well, about 13 games. I think they're going to – I'm going to go – I'm going to go nine and four. Okay. I, I, I'm going to go nine and four. Like I said, there's a three there, and I always think there's going to be one suspicious one. So I'm going to go nine and four. I think it's a realistic uh, expectation for this one Well, Wisconsin Badgers uh, football team. Hey, hey, not bad at all. I think all the Badgers fans watching us tonight are definitely going to appreciate the the season prediction for them. And uh, who knows, man, they might be able to uh, surprise some people and get into that Big Ten championship game. You never know. It'll be interesting to see how these Badgers do this year, but I do think they definitely are going to take a step forward. Well, if you guys have enjoyed the content here tonight, thank you guys so much for tuning in, whether you're watching us live on Facebook, on YouTube, or on Twitch. Also, please go check out our podcast. It's pretty easy to look at, man. Just go on Spotify, Apple, iHeart, iTunes, Stitcher, anything that you listen to a podcast on, we are on there. Just type in 100 Yards of Football. You'll see our logo right there on the 50-yard line. We upload daily podcasts, whether it's team previews like we're doing right now, amazing legends interviews, talking with some of the best coaches, former players, just amazing personnel throughout the game of football. We also do a little bit of other sports as well. We did a little bit of boxing earlier this week, talking about the great Muhammad Ali. So we got a little bit of everything for you over there. So please go check us out over on Spotify, Apple, or any of your podcast streaming services. Be sure to give us a like and a thumbs up. And keep on downloading because we sure love you making y'all happy and putting up some great sports content. Well, hey, for my amazing co-host tonight, Jay McLovin, thanks for so much, man, for coming on the show, talking about the badges. I've been your host tonight, Logan Landers. Hey, be sure to stay tuned because we got some more great football content coming up in just a second. So 